Good evening. I hope you've had a great day today. I hope you've been encouraged and uplifted today. And this evening, for just a few minutes, I want us to focus on Psalm 148. If you have your Bibles, I want to encourage you to open them up, turn to Psalm 148. We'll go there in just a moment. This particular psalm does not have an ascription at the beginning. There's uh, no designation as to whom the psalmist is. But this psalm is no doubt familiar to uh, a lot of us, whether you understand that at this point or not. As we read through, you'll say, oh, I recognize that. Truth is, this psalm is a song that we sing uh, uh, regarding the praise of God. Uh, certainly, this psalm is a part of what some have called the Hallelujah Chorus of the Psalms. It's right at the end where uh, there are uh, psalm after psalm speaking about praising God, extolling Him, uh, worshiping Him, lifting Him up, exalting Him. Uh, but praise seems to be uh, the overarching theme of many of the closing psalms. And so, therefore, some have deemed this portion as the hallelujah chorus of the psalms. Well, you'll see it in this psalm, but I want you to listen to the first few verses, and, and I'm sure you will recognize uh, some of the wording that we see here. Psalm 148, praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights, praise him all his angels, praise him all his hosts, praise him sun and moon, Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. This opening section, these first four verses, I'm sure you recognize uh, the words. Again, this is a psalm of praise to God. Now, in our Sunday morning series on identity, this morning particularly, we talked about dealing with the aftermath and the reality that there's no way we can overcome our sin problem on our own, with our own strength, but rather God uh, provides strength for us. He is merciful and gracious, and because of that, we have hope in Christ. And what a wonderful blessing from God that that truly is. Now, the reality of where we're heading with that particular uh, uh, series on identity is coming to understand uh, who we've been created to be. We know that God is good. We know that, that God created us in his image, and therefore there must be something very special about us. We know that God longs to have a relationship with us, uh, but we also know that something went wrong. And we see Adam and Eve succumbing to the temptation in the garden and their subsequent uh, expulsion from the garden, uh, sin entering the world, death through sin. Uh, and now we have to deal with the aftermath. But again, thankfully, uh, we don't have to do that in our own strength. Well, because we understand what God has done for us in Christ, and because we understand that God is so gracious and compassionate and merciful and loving toward us, we praise him. He is worthy of our praise. And so I think this psalm speaks to all of creation, uh, ourselves included, um, submitting to God in praise. And essentially, when you see uh, these elements of creation, the heights, uh, angels, the hosts, uh, uh, the sun and moon, the, sh the shining stars, the, the heavens, the, the waters above the heavens, whenever you see all of these things listed, you think, well, there's no way that they can verbalize uh, praise to God, but just in their splendor and in the glory of God's creative work, the result of his creative work or the things that we see around us, they shout out the praise of God. And we too ought to praise God with all of our heart. Let's keep reading verse 5, Psalm 148. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created, and he established them forever and ever. He gave a decree and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all deeps, uh, fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth uh, and all peoples, 
princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children. All of these are to praise God. And again, this psalm, Psalm 148, is a psalm of praise to God. And essentially, the psalmist is saying, all of creation ought to praise God. All of creation ought to understand uh, who the Creator is and what the Creator has done. And by that understanding, give Him all praise and glory. Now, the interesting part about this particular psalm to me comes at verse 13. It's verses 13 and 14 as we conclude this psalm. Listen to what he says. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his saints, for the people of Israel who are near to him. Praise the Lord. This psalm of praise identifies the various aspects of creation and God's creative work. He has made them. It's verse 5 that says, For he commanded and they were created. God said, Let there be light. He commanded or spoke creation into existence. And because of God's power, because of his might, because of his creative work, he is worthy of our praise. But it's not only that. The interesting part comes in verses 13 and 14 that we just read. Again, a call to praise the name of the Lord, uh, for his name alone is exalted. His might, or his majesty rather, is above earth and heaven. He is indeed worthy of praise. That's what the psalmist is saying. But then something else comes in verse 14. He has raised up a horn for his people. Now, uh, the horn uh, for his people, a horn is often identified as uh, strength or uh, protection or salvation. And so you think in terms of what God has done for us. God has given us strength. He has protected us and he has given us salvation in his son. And because of that, he is worthy, infinitely worthy of all our praise. And so the psalmist is reminding us of God's creative work and of God's redemptive work. Though he doesn't go into great detail regarding the redemptive work of God, he does, in fact, say he has raised up a horn for his people. This idea of strength, protection, salvation, God has delivered. And so because of that, we ought always to give him our full and complete praise.